Dr. Elise Salem, the Associate Provost for Global Learning, and our office sponsors these lectures uh, in coordination with the Ambassadors Club at the United Nations. We work with the office of Joe Kiernan, the Provost's office here, and with sponsorship from the North Jersey Media. So thank you very much for attending. Two weeks ago, we had the Ambassador from Cyprus talk to us. Then we had spring break, and we are delighted that we have uh, his Excellency, the Ambassador from Norway, to talk to us today. Both Cyprus and Norway are little countries, four million, three, four, five million, and yet have made a huge impact. And when I was thinking about what to say about Norway, and I'm going to keep my remarks very, very brief, I was thinking that such a small country in terms of population, but what a broad global world vision Norway in the last 30, 40 years at the forefront of peace missions, human rights, conflict resolution across the globe. In my country, again, Lebanon, I know you're getting sick and tired of hearing about Lebanon, but two weeks ago when uh, the ambassador from Cyprus was speaking, I thanked him personally for helping us with our latest evacuation and war. And right now we have the ambassador from Norway, and Norway has been a key player with UNIFIL, the United Nations peacekeeping force in Lebanon, but in many other regions of the world as well. Norway is where the Nobel Peace Prize is awarded every year. Norway is where the Oslo Accords uh, took place. Norway is a country where human rights, where civics, where a, a way of life has been perfected that doesn't rely on conflict, that doesn't rely on arms build up. And it's just a pleasure to be able to hear from this country and especially on the issue of uh, peace building, which is something that we are very interested in at Fairleigh Dickinson. Last October, we had a big symposium here, um, Mr. Ambassador, on human rights and conflict resolution, where we brought together many practitioners from the UN, from Amnesty International, from Human Rights Watch, um, survivors of torture, um, sex trafficking. It was a very intense two days and we hope to raise awareness on both campuses about issues that are or must be crucial to our young students as they are growing up and to us as well. So we want to continue this tradition of talking about peace, peace studies, conflict resolution, human rights, that these issues that are global and international are not theories, they're not just up there. They are real, and there is a role to be played at a university. A university has an important role to play in educating citizens and creating people who care, who might make a difference. So we're very, very interested and excited that you are with us. Um, Ambassador Kamel is a good friend, a colleague, and a very engaged scholar and engaging scholar and speaker, as many of you already know. He's been a professional diplomat for hmm, four decades now, I believe, from Pakistan to the United Nations. He's the founder and the president of the United Nations uh, Ambassadors Club. And as always, without Ambassador Kamal, none of this would happen. So I'd like to welcome Ambassador Kamal, who will then introduce our speaker more officially. Thank you. It is uh, a great pleasure and an honor for me to be able to introduce Ambassador Lowald to uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University and this distinguished audience. Uh, Ambassador Lowald comes to us from Norway, and there's not very much that we know about Norway. Uh, we know that it is uh, a very romantic country because the nights are long in uh, Norway, uh, and it is full of tall, handsome men and beautiful blonde women. We know that it is a very cold country, which means that you have to find different ways of keeping yourself warm. And the Norwegians are experts at that. Uh, we know that it's a very virile population. These are strong people who uh, get into ships like Vikings and then go across the Atlantic without any difficulty. Uh, we know that they have strong legs because they start walking and when they walk, they get right to the South Pole. Uh, 
Amundsen is a name which jumps to mind. We know that it's a very attractive environment because uh, of the beauty, of the fabled beauty of the fjords uh, in Norway, uh, which then, uh, in other words, produce an environment which is more conducive to love than Niagara Falls. Uh, but that is about all that we know in our literature about Norway. There is much more to Norway than just love and attraction. Uh, this is a country which has distinguished itself as being at the apex of the true diplomatic method. Uh, this is a country which has been involved in some of the most sensitive uh, diplomatic uh, problems and has done so with distinction without standing in front of cameras, doing it the proper way, that is to say behind the scenes, not seeking uh, kudos, and succeeding in an effort through a process of true, uh, silent, effective diplomacy. Uh, Dr. Salem has already spoken about uh, the, the results that Norway has achieved and continues to achieve in the most intractable dispute which we have, which is in this whole region of the Middle East, whether it is Lebanon or Israel or Palestine or beyond. Uh, and so it is a great pleasure, Mr. Ambassador, to have you here. Uh, but my, my reservation about you comes from the fact that I have an impression that you think that you are going to be able to get away we're just giving a narrow and neutral explanation of the Peace Building Commission in the United Nations. And I just want to warn you that you're not going to get away with it. Uh, we, uh, there are many places other than the Peace Building Commission at the United Nations where peace can be built and achieved. Uh, we live in a world in which there are critical, intractable, disputes which have been going on for 50 years, for 60 years, for longer. There is a 60-year war which has already gone on in the Middle East. Uh, we know that we live in a period of great uncertainty, of great frustration at the disputes, at the injustices that we see every day. We live in a world where we have perhaps the greatest denial of human rights in the form of continuing abject poverty. Poverty is the greatest violation of human rights. And so we welcome you here at Fairleigh Dickinson because we need you to walk us through not just the Peace Building Commission, which is okay. Uh, who knows whether, I don't even know who are its members because I don't know what it does. And my suspicion is that it does nothing. Uh, but I do know that we look upon Norway as a beacon towards which we can turn as an anchor which gives us hope for the future in a very sad world. And so we welcome you here, sir, to, walk out, to give us some optimism in what would otherwise be a pessimistic world. You have the floor. Well, after that introduction, I'm delighted to get the floor to set the record straight. Uh, in fact, um, I'm, uh, I'm keen to tell you a little bit what the UN is up to in terms of peace building today, because in fact, uh, a lot of stuff has, has happened at the UN lately on, on peace building. Sh certainly, the, the focus has been on, on the creation of the new peace building commission. And and it's, it's, it's an exciting event, and, and contrary to what you had just heard, lots of stuff has happened.